Hello everybody, inhabitants of planet Earth. I am uh, continuing on a project that you have uh, thus far been unaware of, and that is to take this double-ended canoe and make it into a flatback canoe uh, for using a motor on. It would be much better to use a motor on. I built this jig here. It has a flat back on it, and I'm just about to put my uh, my transom piece on there. The idea being that once I have this jig <clears throat> all boxed in, I'm going to use uh, plastic. And we're going to use this foam here, polyurethane liquid foam that I got. This is the uh, AB foam. This is the two-pound version. This is the two pound AB foam. Cost for these was essentially $100. Uh, maybe a little under $100. About $45 uh, for each component. And this is the two pound. Apparently there are, uh, there's a two pound, a four pound, and an eight pound. And that's the density of the foam. In order to save money, I wanted to have the least dense foam. In other words, the two pound will expand a great deal more than the eight pound or the four pound. So I'm gonna finish up this jig and then start pouring my foam. So I'll go ahead and take this transom piece and screw it in right now. So we will install this transom piece. never easy for just one person. But I already have the angle marked. <laughs> I've got it upside down. There we go. In this uh, transom, and I don't know whether I'm going to continue with this, I'll cut it out afterwards, but I have a channel. And the, uh, once I have the foam in, I will cut this channel out with a jigsaw and then scoop along here to create a uh, rounded channel piece. That way I can have the motor, the outboard motor up so that we can run in really shallow draft. We don't have to have it as low. Get back up in the skinny water. Let's see if I can... Should stick a couple screws in here ahead of time. This canoe is really great, but for using my little five horse outboard, it's frustrating because of this cutaway back here. Because it's a double ended uh, canoe, it doesn't have the properties necessary to help it stay on plane. And so I'm making a much broader base here and that should help it quite a bit. This screwed in here. Ah, frustrating. Okay, so I'll finish tightening that up and sticking that in. 
and then we'll get on get on with boxing this in. That yeah, looks right. Now we have to do a little bit of the endless grinding that goes with fiberglass work. I've got the jig all made up here to that side, standing on its end. I have to come along here and grind this down to the raw glass. The foam will come to here and come out and over. But where the foam ends, I need to, to join the fiberglass with the new fiberglass that's going to cover the foam. And that fiberglass is going to need to hit raw fiberglass here to really adhere properly. So I've got to come all the way down along this line with my grinder. We're getting some raw glass right here. So I'll just stop when I get to the raw glass and work my way this way a little bit. And it'll be a very good surface for this all to work on. So on with the grinding. I have sanded down both sides where the seam of the foam and the fiberglass will be. So now I'm going to put this jig back on. See how it fits. Very good. So we have the seam coming right along where it should be, right along the bottom edge of where the foam is going to terminate. Now I just need to put my plastic in here and pour my foam in and keep building it up until it gets to the same level as the hull. Then I can start shaping it by sanding it. Then the whole fiberglass process will start where I have to cover the whole thing with fiberglass. But it's looking good. It's coming along really well. In order to get the foam to release from the mold, because that pour foam will stick to almost anything, it was suggested that I use plastic sheeting. So I'm right now covering the, the mold or the form in uh, this plastic sheeting. And then I will be ready to pour and start filling this up. So I'll continue to get this on here and then get out the foam and start pouring. After you pour the foam, if there are any voids, it's really easy just to pour a little extra foam on it and fill them up. So I've been a bit, I've, I'm trying to be as careful as possible to get it as close to the final form as possible because that's less work in the end of trying to carve all of it. It also helps you have a much more accurate final product. Get this in here behind the transom. Try to keep as many wrinkles out of it as possible. Because every wrinkle will show in the foam. So I'll just finish up putting the plastic on there and start pouring the foam. Okay, I believe that I have all of the mold or the form covered in plastic so it should release from the foam and I've set up right over here my A and B foam. You never want to mix the two, so I use this box here and I'm just going to keep one on either side. You mix them equal parts. It's very simple. And 
then you pour them where you want it to expand and it will expand whether you like it or not. <laughs> so I'll get started here. Here it goes. Start out with 12 ounces. B side. A side. You should wear a mask when you're doing this, but uh, I'm in the uh, open air here, so it shouldn't be too bad. You got the A and the B side. vigorously try to get it as well mixed as you can before it starts to rise because when it starts to rise it's going to go It'll go rather rapidly I'm going to work from the back to the front so Starting to rise. Let it spill over in here so. I want it to try to rise a lot because I don't want it to leak too much. There are some small cracks around the plastic. But that was good. That was a good mix. Yeah, that's great. That it's um, it's bunching up around the cracks and not leaking through. That's really good. Good first pour. Take a few pictures of this. Make sure there's none of the stuff on here. Nicely. I'm hoping that this uh, mount is enough to do the whole boat. This is 9.6 pounds of foam. I don't see the actual fluid measurement. Oh, looking good. Let me bring you in closer. Yeah, it's expanding really well. So I'm going to mix up another batch and pour it right on top of that batch. It actually looks as though it's kind of peeling away from the hull, which would not be good. I hope that is not the case. Because if it doesn't stick to the hull, <laughs> that would be pretty disastrous. Expanding out nicely. And you just continue thusly until you have the entire project covered in said foam. Well, unfortunately, $100 worth of foam wasn't enough. 
So I think the foam is going to be probably the most expensive part of the process. I'll have to get some more. I don't think I have to get another uh, couple of gallon containers. I think maybe I can do it with half of that. So, but I might just get another couple gallons to make sure I make it through. I had a big old piece on the ground here. So it's back to the fiberglass store. Yeah, had a little bit fall through. So it's waste. But let's see how it's really stuck to the ground very well. If it sticks to the boat as well, it sticks to the ground. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it uprooted the whole thing. That is strange. So hopefully it'll stick to the hull that well. Okay, it's a couple hours later. I went and got some more pour foam to the tune of another $105. I was able to get it poured before this storm comes in. And uh, aside from filling some voids when I carve it down, there'll probably be some voids in there. I think that I'm pretty much done with the foam side of it now. And uh, we'll move on to the fiberglass side of it. So we will see how easily this comes off when the time comes. Looks like the plastic's going to release just fine. I'll have to cut these pieces of wood out of here. But uh, it'll be ready for carving. Next step, carving. I'm going to go ahead and remove the mold because I'm bored. It's the evening time and I would normally leave it on, but it's... Uh, set up enough and we'll see if we can get the mold off. Awesome. Okay, I'm doing the dirty work now. I 
got to uh, cut all the excess foam off. So one of the best tools is a nice old wood raft. Use that to level out the flat surfaces. But right now I'm squaring it off with a regular. Trying to even out both sides. Right. So I'll just have to keep on shaping this till I get it the way I need it. Oh, it's brutal work. Well, we're making pretty good progress. We've got it well roughed in on the bottom. I need to just keep shaping it. it means I have to keep really keeping a uh, keeping an eye on the contour of the hull. So I keep sculpting it, and if periodically when I find little places that are uneven or need to be filled, I'll use whatever foam I have left to fill those in. I'll just keep working my way to the back. But it's going to work. It's going to work quite nicely. And I've got to cover it all in fiberglass. Oh.